As we know from the Hebrew dictionary of the Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, the word Kenites is number 7017, and it's patronomic, which means a name derived from the name of a father or ancestor. From 7014, which as you can see is Cain. In other words, the Kenites are the sons of Cain, who carry out the negative part of God's plan throughout history, the natural branches of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that is to say Satan, the father of Cain. Christ would bring this to the surface as well, not only in the parable of the tares of the field, but also in John chapter 8, verse 44, where speaking to the Kenites, Christ said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it, spiritually speaking, the first murderer. And as far as the flesh is concerned, the first murderer was Cain, the son of the devil. And to document that, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent, which is Satan, as we know from Revelation chapters 12 and 20, where Satan is called that old serpent, the serpent from the garden, and it's not a talking snake, it's just one of Satan's names. It's symbolic of his character. He's that conniving and slippery, a snake in the grass, so to speak. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, this is Eve he's speaking to, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now this word touch, if you look in your Strong's Concordance, it means to lie with a woman. It's a Hebrew euphemism. And this tree in the midst of the garden she's talking about is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Satan. Here he's both the serpent and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The serpent being the role he's playing here in the seduction of Eve. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Notice this word beguiled here. If you look that up in your Strong's Concordance, it's expatio, which means to seduce wholly. Eve will be seduced in every possible way, resulting in the impregnation of Eve with the son of the devil. Let's continue in Genesis 3. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now this is not true. God said ye shall surely die if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Satan. It's a figure of speech, meaning don't partake of his doctrine. Don't listen to him. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. For he is that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the opposite of the tree of life, which is Christ Jesus. You're supposed to partake of the doctrine of Christ, which is the truth of God's word, in order to inherit eternal life. If you partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Satan, that is to say, you're going to die spiritually. You're going to be blotted out eventually in that lake of fire if you continue to follow Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, instead of Christ. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband. He was standing there the whole time with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons to cover up their sexual organs. Why? Because we're not talking about literally eating fruit off of a tree. It was a sexual sin that took place here. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And so it shall be at the return of the true Christ, after most of the world whores after Satan, whenever he appears as Antichrist, 
at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, then the true Christ is going to return after that, immediately after that hour of temptation, and they're going to want the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them out of shame. As Christ said in Revelation 16, Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Because your fine linen that you wear in heaven is made up of your righteous acts. And once a Christian worships the devil, they're no longer a Christian. They're a Satan worshiper. They die spiritually and they lose credit for their righteous acts, making them naked. And the Lord God called unto Adam, this is Et Ha'adam in the Hebrew, Christ's first ancestor, and that's why Satan is doing this, attempting to prevent Christ from being born. That's why he seduced Eve and impregnated her with his seed, the serpent seed. And it wouldn't be the first time Satan will attempt to stop Christ from being born. This is why Cain will kill Abel. And this is why Satan will send his angels in Genesis chapter 6 to impregnate the daughters of Adam, to pollute that bloodline to prevent Christ from being born, to attempt to prevent Christ from being born. But he will fail, as you know. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. Remember what that means in the Greek, to seduce holy, to seduce in every possible way. He seduced her spiritually and physically, impregnating her with his seed, the serpent's seed. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. This is a statement of degradation. Satan is the lowest of the low, and he is that son of perdition, sentenced to perish, and will be blotted out of existence in the lake of fire after the millennium, along with anyone who's stupid enough to follow him after the thousand years are finished. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, the serpent's seed, his offspring, and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first prophecy of the Bible, and it's speaking of the crucifixion. The serpent's seed, the Kenites, would cause Christ to be crucified. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's to conceive a child. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Et ha Adam, the man, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Thorns and thistles will repeatedly be used to symbolize the sons of Cain, the serpent seed, and they bring about the usury of the world. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, and to take it a step further, the bread being the word of God, they come out with various new translations of the word of God and pollute people's minds through their four hidden dynasties, making it incredibly hard to study the Word of God unless you go out of your way and separate yourself from the Kenite-infested society in which we live. There's not all that many Kenites, but nowadays through technology, electronically, they get into people's houses and corrupt them that way to distract them from the Word of God whereby they are deceived so that they'll die spiritually at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial when Satan appears as Antichrist. You'll see that number written of in Revelation 13, 18, where it says, Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That man is that man of sin, Satan. It doesn't mean he's human. He's called a man in Ezekiel 28 as well as Isaiah 14. So that's not unusual. But that word count 
means to enumerate stones worn smooth over a long period of time whereby you understand who the Kenites are. And when you know who the Kenites are, you know who the Antichrist is because those stones came off of that larger rock, the false rock, not the true rock, not the true Christ, but the false Christ. Satan's even called the king of Tyrus. Tyrus means rock in Ezekiel chapter 28. So those stones, those pebbles came off of that larger rock. Tracing the genealogy of the Kenites all the way back to the garden, back to Cain, and then back to his father Satan, the false Christ. That's who the Antichrist is. That's why it's important to know who the Kenites are, because they will endorse him as the Messiah whenever he appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. This is a spiritual statement because eventually from Adam and Eve would come the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're not in Christ, then you're going to die spiritually. You're not going into the third world age, the eternity, that is to say. There are three world ages. Satan rebelled in the first world age. We are now in the second world age. And at the end of the thousand years that begin upon the return of the true Christ, the great white throne judgment transpires. And then it's determined who's going into the lake of fire to be blotted out of existence forever and ever, and who's going into the eternity, the third world age. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken, because the tree of life is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you listen to him, then you will live forever. You will not die in that lake of fire. If you believe upon the words of the true Christ, if you really believe upon the words of the true Christ, that's what's going to happen. If you love the truth, if you have not the love of the truth, then God will send strong delusion that you will believe a lie. And that's why people will be deceived. They don't love God. They don't love the truth. They might say that they do. They might even think that they do. But do they really? What do they spend their time doing? Studying our Father's Word or something else? Getting involved in the distractions of the Kenites? Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man... And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Chapter 4 and verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. The conception of Cain took place in chapter 3. The conception of Abel we're reading of here. And Adam knew Eve his wife, conceiving Abel, and she conceived Abel and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. If you look into this in the Hebrew, I have gotten a man against the Lord, and you'll see why that is as we continue. So these are twins from two different fathers, and the medical term for that is heteropaternal superfecundation. Look it up. It's possible, and that's what's going on here. It's the only explanation, if you read it, going back to the Hebrew, using your Strong's Concordance, that's all this could be speaking of. And she again bare his brother Abel. This word again in the Hebrew means to continue to do a thing. So she's pregnant with twins. She's already given birth to Cain. And now she's giving birth to his brother Abel. Twins from two different fathers. Not identical twins, but this is heteropaternal superfecundation. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, a shepherd that is to say. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, the first fruits, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So Abel naturally loved God, as you naturally would. Cain did not, because he's the son of the devil." And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why hast thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, 
shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So if a Kenite decides to love our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, he will be accepted. He's no longer a child of the devil, but is grafted onto the tree of life, God's family tree. The Kenites are the natural branches of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Satan's family tree. And those grafted on are grafted on because of deception and hatred for God. But if a Kenite chooses to love the Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ, to love our Father and to hearken diligently unto his voice and to repent and be converted to Christianity, they're taken from Satan's family tree and grafted onto the tree of life, God's family tree. Paul spoke of this in Romans chapter 11 as far as the natural branches which are natural Israel, as well as those grafted in because of Christ Jesus. You're not in God's family tree unless you're a Christian. It's not automatic. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Even though God told him what he needed to do, he decided to murder his brother Abel. The lusts of his father he did do because he's of his father the devil. Cain is... And so are the Kenites. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Here he is lying to God's face. Look at his fruits here. Notice Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. You'll know them by their fruit. An evil tree cannot produce good fruit, as Christ said. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. That's a lie. That's not true. He's lying to God Almighty here. Think about that. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. All those that were to be born into this second world age through Abel were now crying out from the ground. That blood, that blood line from which Christ was to come. That's why Satan put Cain up to this. That's why the devil put this into the heart of his son Cain. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened your mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, a murderer from the beginning, just like his father the devil. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So within this you can identify who the Kenites are, a fugitive and a vagabond, Shalt thou be in the earth is the curse of Cain, and they're not able to grow their own food. They parasitically leech off of other nations, okay? And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. So here we have the mark of tares written of here, and the mark of the beast, which is in their forehead or in their right hand, as you can read for yourself in Revelation 13, are with those who are deceived at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, when Satan appears as Antichrist, will receive that deception. They'll receive that deception into their mind. That's what's in your forehead and in their right hand, meaning they'll serve the devil because they'll think that he's Jesus. Just as Cain carried out the will of his father, by murdering his half-brother Abel. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So the first thing the son of the devil does here, after being cast away from the presence of God, is to build a city. So that says a lot about how wonderful cities are. Look at all the sin that goes on in a city, as opposed to the country. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad beget Mehuyael, and Mehuyael beget Methusael, and Methusael beget Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabel. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, fugitives and vagabonds, documenting that this curse 
goes throughout the bloodline. They're born with it, but there's a way out. As God said, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? All they have to do is repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will be taken from Satan's family tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Kenites being the natural branches of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and grafted onto the tree of life, the many-membered body of Christ, God's family tree, true Israel. And Ada bare Jabel, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. That's what the Kenites like to call the so-called Gentiles. They call the actual tribes of Israel goy and cattle, because the actual tribes of Israel, for the most part, have no idea who they are. They think the Kenites are God's chosen people. That's how great of a job Satan's done deceiving the world. The actual tribes of Israel, the natural branches, as well as those grafted in, there's very few that know the truth of the matter. From our Father's word, it's right here. It couldn't be more obvious when you read our Father's word and look around at the world. It's very clear who the Kenites are. They claim to be God's chosen people, as it's written in Revelation. They claim to be Jews. But they do lie and are the synagogue of Satan. But yet many Christians believe them to be of the tribe of Judah. They're not. They do lie just like their father the devil. The lust of their father they will do and are the synagogue of Satan. Am I saying you should hate these people? No. But you need to count those stones worn smooth over a long period of time whereby you're not deceived. Now, and especially during the hour of temptation, because that's who's going to endorse Satan as the Messiah, and those who believe the Kenites to be God's chosen people are going to fall for it hook, line, and sinker. So that's a salvation issue, is it not? And that's why you need to learn who the Kenites are. It's the key of David to understand the genealogy of the true Christ as opposed to the genealogy of Satan. Beginning at the garden, the genealogy of Satan begins with his firstborn who was Cain, and his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah also, she bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So Lamech was a murderer as well, a bloodline of murderers, the generation of vipers. This is why Christ would say to them in Matthew chapter 23, All the blood from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah shall fall upon this generation. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. And from Seth eventually would come the Lord Jesus Christ, instead of Abel. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Cain being a man against the Lord. As Eve said, if you look into the Hebrew, that's what she really said here. Not, I've gotten a man from the Lord, but, oh no, I've gotten a man against the Lord was more like what she said there. If you look into the original language, you'll see that to be the case. Look at that word from there in verse 1 of chapter 4, and there you'll have it. Pretty obvious. And to Seth, to him also, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, this isn't what this really says in the Hebrew either. It really says this is when men began to call upon their gods by the name of Yahweh, so they began to blaspheme God at this time, no doubt as a result of the Kenites. So there you have it. That's who the Kenites are, the sons of Cain who became the scribes and Pharisees of Christ's time and caused him to be crucified, carrying out the negative part of God's plan. And now they formulate the one world government. They're called the Illuminati by many people, but they're a bloodline. They're a race of hybrids from Cain who was the son of the devil, the generation of vipers, and they carry out the negative part of God's plan, formulating that one world system through their four hidden dynasties of education, 
economics, politics, and religion, and at the woe of the fifth trumpet, whenever Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth, that one world political system will finally emerge, with the horn of the he-goat being broken, which I believe is symbolic of the UN. That just provides the skeletal structure of this one world system. It's not the one world system itself, because that has four parts to it, as you know from Daniel chapter 7. The lion, the bear, the leopard, which is the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties, and Daniel's fourth beast, which is exclusively supernatural because it's made up of Satan and his angels. They're not here until the woe of the fifth trumpet, so you can't have a one world government until then, not until Daniel's fourth beast is here. And that's when the lion and the bear and the leopard and Daniel's fourth beast merged together into a one-world government that rises up from the sea, which is symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, and the dragon gives him his seat and his power and great authority. Satan is the dragon, that old serpent that we just read of in Genesis chapter 3. So there you have it. It's as simple as that. The deadly wound to the one-world political system will transpire after it emerges, and then Satan will appear as the false Christ, at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. Count those stones, enumerate them, understand who they came from, which is the false rock, which is the false Christ. The true Christ, the true rock, will not return until immediately after the tribulation of those days, immediately after the five-month-long hour of temptation. It was seven years, now it's been shortened to a five-month period, as we know from Revelation chapter 9. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the true Christ shall return as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, ending the reign of the Kenites as well as their father, the false Messiah, because it's at that time that Satan's one world system as well as his role of Antichrist are destroyed in the lake of fire. But those that made up the lion, the bear, and the leopard will be changed into spiritual bodies at that time. And the lion is the Christian nations, the bear is the communistic nations, Russia, along with the Islamic nations, Esau and Ishmael. And the leopard, again, is the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties. They'll be changed into spiritual bodies at the seventh trumpet, at the return of the true Christ. And they'll go through the millennium. And if they choose to stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished, then rather than being blotted out of existence in the lake of fire, they'll go into the eternity, the third world age. And it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance.